Good morning. At this time in our worship service, we're going to have communion. Now, communion is not something we do just to check a box. You know, announcements, songs, opening prayer, communion, Joe's lesson, Greg's after message, closing prayer. No, we don't check boxes in, in worship. That's not what it's all about. Uh, especially with communion. We don't just check a box. Jesus doesn't want box checkers. He wants followers. And what we do is, we don't do a ritual. We don't do rituals, especially with communion. Now soon, Joe is going to come and deliver a message that's been inspired by the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, and we need that. But, the Jesus, the Son of God right now, is the star of the show. And he's the one we need to give our utmost attention to, our concentration to. Today, I want to briefly talk about two parts of communion, the bread and the wine. Communion is not something that can only be done on Sunday. In fact, uh, the believers, they went from house to house having the Lord's Supper. So we can do this any day and probably should do this every day, especially when we're not feeling well or things going bad. Communion is, is what Jesus has given us. We don't do communion. We actually receive communion from Jesus. On the bread, it represents Jesus' body. You find that in Matthew 26, 26. Now Jesus, he's the healer. He, he heals our weaknesses, our body weaknesses, our sicknesses, and our pains. And the bread represents his body. And what it says here in, in what it says in First uh, Peter two twenty four. Let's let's turn to that. Uh, yep, you know what? <laughs> he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds we are healed. So those stripes he took, those beatings he took on there. I'm sure most of y'all saw the Passion of Christ, and you saw how his skin was ripped off. That was done for us, to heal us. That's what it was all about, to heal our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our diseases. That's what he did that for. Now, there's also the wine we have now, which represents Jesus' blood, which we'll find in Matthew 26, 27 through 28. Jesus, in this case, he's a cleanser, the forgiver, the unifier. He continues, his blood continuously washes away our sins. And he also gives us the new covenant. Find that in Ephesians 2.13. So we have Jesus the healer and Jesus the cleanser, forgiver, unifier. You know what that equals? Jesus the complete savior. That's what he is. He's the complete savior for us. Hebrews 10 Verse 11 through 18 says, Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering... He forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For it says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices Jesus has done it all. He's the complete Savior. Amen.